Hello everyone. Today I will discuss about the chapter Light Reflection and Refraction of Class 10 Science based on NCRT syllabus. So let's start the chapter. We see variety of objects in the world around us. However, we are unable to see anything in a dark room. On lighting up the room, the things become visible. What makes the thing visible? During the day, the sunlight helps us to see the objects. An object reflects the light that falls on it. The reflected light, when received by our eyes, enables us to see the things. In this chapter, we shall study the phenomena of reflection and refraction of light using the straight line propagation of light. These basic concepts will help us in the study of some of the optical phenomena in nature. We shall try to understand in the chapter the reflection of light by spherical mirrors and refraction of light and their applications in the real life situation. So first you should know what is light. Light is a form of energy which enables us to see the objects around us. Next is what are the properties of light? Number one, it is an electromagnetic wave. It does not require any medium to travel. Electromagnetic waves are the wave in which both electric and magnetic field is present. Light always tends to travel in a straight line. So this is number two property. Next number three is it has dual nature. It means that it behaves like a wave and also it behaves like a particle. Number four is light cast shadows. Light itself cannot block other light and therefore cast a shadow. Number five, speed of light in vacuum is always 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Number six, when light falls on a surface, it may get reflected or refracted to the surface. So these are the basic properties of light. Next is what is reflection of light? When light bounces back to the same medium after strikes a polished surface is called reflection of light. As shown in figure, suppose light is coming from a source S and incident at a point O on a polished surface by making an angle I with the normal. This incident ray after strikes the surface, it bounces back making an angle R with the normal where I is called incident angle or angle of incidence and R is called angle of reflection. There are two laws of reflection of light. Number one, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection that is angle I equal to angle R. Number two, the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal and the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. So the next topic is how images forms after reflection and refraction. Formation of the image is basically of two types, real image and virtual image. Real image is formed when light rays actually meet. On the other hand, the virtual image formed when light rays appears to meet but not meet in reality. Real image can be obtained on screen, but virtual image we cannot be obtained on screen. Real image is always inverted. 
On the other hand, virtual image is always erect. So next is image on a plane mirror. The formation of image on a plane mirror is always virtual and erect equal to the object size and forms at the same distance from the mirror behind of it and it is always laterally inverted. So what do you mean by lateral inversion? See the image of an ambulance. It is written in laterally inverted. That is why when a driver see this ambulance world in his rear view mirror, he can see actual name of the ambulance. So next topic is spherical mirror. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards, that is, faces towards the center of the sphere, is called concave mirror or converging mirror. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outward is called a convex mirror or diverging mirror. Before we move further on spherical mirrors, we need to recognize and understand the meaning of few terms. These terms are commonly used in discussions about spherical mirrors. The center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point called the pole. It lies on the surface of the mirror. The pole is usually represented by the letter P. The reflecting surface of the spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere. This sphere has a center. This point is called the center of curvature of the spherical mirror. It is represented by the letter C. Please note that the center of curvature is not a part of the mirror. It lies outside the reflecting surface. The radius of the sphere of which the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror forms a part is called the radius of curvature of the mirror. It is represented by the letter capital R. The distance PC is equal to the radius of curvature of the spherical mirror. The line is the principal axis. The principal axis is normal that is perpendicular to the mirror at its pole which passing through the radius of curvature. The diameter of the reflecting surface of spherical mirror is called its aperture. The distance Mn represents the aperture as shown in figure F is a point called focus. The distance between pole and focus is called focal length small f and its relation with the radius of curvature is capital R equal to twice small f. These are equal to twice f. Now let us discuss the rules to make gray diagrams by concave mirror that is converging mirror. Number 1. When a ray incident parallel to the principal axis, then after reflection, it will pass through focus. Next is Number 2. When a ray incident through focus after reflection, it will parallel to the principal axis. Number 3. When a ray passes through center of curvature, is reflected back on the same path. Number 4. When ray incident on pole is reflected 
making an equal angle. Now, let us draw some ray diagrams for image formation by concave mirror. First case, when the object remains at infinity. When the object remains at infinity, the rays coming from the object will be parallel to the principal axis and after reflection, all rays will pass through focus. They will intersect at the focus. Thus, the image will form at focus. The nature of the image will be real and inverted and size will be very small point size. Next, second case. When the object remains beyond C, when the object remains beyond C, then one ray will come from the object parallel to the principal axis and other ray will pass through center of curvature and strike on the surface of the mirror. So the first ray after reflection will pass through focus and the second ray passing through C center of curvature will return back through same path as mentioned in the rule number 3. So the image will produce exactly at the intersecting point of the two rays. Therefore, when the object remains beyond C, image will produce between C and F. The nature of the image will be real and inverted and its size will be small as compared to object. Next is case 3. When the object remains at C, when the object remains at C, one ray will go parallel to the principal axis and after reflection passes through focus. Other ray will go through the focus and after reflection passes parallel to the principal axis as rule number 2. The point of intersection of the two ray gives the position of the image. Hence, if the object remains at C, image will also produce at C. The size of the image will be of same size as the size of the object. The nature of the image will be real and inverted. Next fourth case. When the object lies between C and F, when the object lies between C and F, that is center of curvature and focus, then one ray will goes parallel and after reflection passes through the focus and the other ray of the object will appears to pass to the center of curvature and after reflection it will pass through the same path as rule 3. Therefore, when the object lies between C and F, the image will form beyond C. The nature of the image will be real and inverted and the size of the object will be enlarged in the image. Next is when the object be at focus. This is the fifth case. When the object remains at focus F, then one ray will parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focus and the other ray will go through center of curvature after reflection it will trace the same line thus we can notice in the figure that the two reflected rays 
are parallel to each other. They will not cross each other at a less distance. Or, in the other way, we can say that the image will produce at infinity. Therefore, when the object remains at f, image will produce at infinity. The nature of the image will be real and inverted and size of the image will be highly enlarged. Next is sixth case when the object remains between pole and focus. When the object remains between pole and focus, then one ray will go parallel to the principal axis and after reflection it will pass through focus and the other ray will pass through center of curvature C. Thus we can see that in the figure the reflected rays are goes away from each other. So it is impossible for the image formation in the front side of the mirror. But if we see on the other side, the distance between the rays gradually decreases. If we draw a partial ray on the back side of the mirror, they will meet at a point. Thus, at a point of intersection, let us draw a virtual image. Thus, finally, we get an image of object which is virtual and erect and larger than the object behind the mirror. Now, let us discuss some uses of concave mirror. It is used in torches, source lights, and vehicle lights to get powerful parallel beams of light. They are often used as saving mirrors to see the larger image of the face. The dentists use concave mirrors to see large images, the teeth of patients. Large concave mirrors are used to concentrate sunlight to produce heat in solar furnaces. Now let us discuss the rules to make ray diagrams by convex mirrors, that is diverging mirror. Rule number one, when a ray of light comes parallel to the principal axis of a convex mirror, it will appear to diverge from the focus. If some person is observing the image form from the top, then he will see the image coming from the focus. But in reality, the ray does not come from focus. That is, it is just an partial image. Second rule, when a ray is directed towards the focus, then after reflection, it will become parallel to the principal axis. If we draw an imaginary line, then it will cross at the focus on the back side of the mirror. Rule number three. When a ray is directed towards the center of curvature, it will reflect back on the same path. Rule number four. When a ray incident to pole, it will reflect with same angle. The next topic is ray diagrams of images formed by a convex mirror. Number one, when the object is placed at infinity. When the object is placed at infinity, then the number of parallel rays are incident on the mirror. And after reflection, it get diversed through different angles. If we join these diverse rays on the back side of the mirror, they will meet at focus. Thus, for convex mirror, when the object remains at infinity, 
the image will form at focus. The nature of the image will be partial and erect and of very small point size. Next is when the object lies between pole and infinity. When the object lies between pole and infinity, then one ray of light goes parallel to the principal axis and after reflection it will diverge through an angle and it will appear to come from focus on the back side of the mirror. The other ray will go towards the center of curvature C and reflected back to the same path. Therefore, image will form at the point of intersection of the imaginary lines on the back side of the mirror. The nature of the mirror will be partial and erect and size is smaller than the object. Next is use of convex mirror. Convex mirrors are commonly used as rear view mirrors in vehicles. It always gives an erect and demonized image and it have wider field of view. Next is sign convention of reflection by spherical mirror. Number one, object is always placed to the left side of the mirror. Number two, all the distances of the object or image placed parallel to the principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror. Number three, all the distances are measured to the left side of the mirror are taken as negative. That is, negative x-axis distances are also taken as negative and the distance measured to the right side that is positive x-axis of the mirror are taken as positive. Number 4. Distance measured perpendicular to the principal axis along positive y-axis that is above the principal axis are taken as positive and negative y-axis that is below the principal axis are taken as negative. In solving the numerical problems, this sign convention is very important. The next topic is mirror formula. Let us consider an object at a distance u from the pole P and let V is the distance of the image from the pole P. If F is the focal length of the mirror, then we have mirror formula. 1 by V plus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. Next is magnification formula of spherical mirror. Suppose H is the height of the object and H this is the height of an image. The magnification M of the image is given by M equal to height of the image divided by head of the object that is h dash by h or m equal to minus h e by u equal to h dash by h where h e and u are the image distance and object distance respectively this mirror formula and magnification formula is important to solve the numerical problems so it's better to memorize this so students today's class is over in the next class i will discuss the other topics of this chapter and yes thanks for watching